declarations of conflict of interest anyone or you can call that just any time before the item comes up approval of agenda any additions or deletions I had two and I asked Jeff so anything else anyone so move circulated your worship oh I can't see her I know Sorry. you're not Danny but I can't see your light either <laughs> okay so there's two items I'd like to remove from the agenda uh, the Coal Shed Music Festival grant, that should be dealt with at a council meeting as there's already been a motion from Committee of the Whole. Okay. And the ele election ballot destruction is actually a, uh, a function of the election official and not of council, so I'd ask to remove that as well. Mm -hmm. I'll take off 7A as well, the, um, the rod letter. I think everybody has a copy of it anyway, so we don't need to, uh, to do that. Okay, so count, uh, Deputy, you're good with... So move with changes. Okay. Second. Second by uh, Councillor McLeod. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Okay, right at it. Staff reports. C A O. So at every at every committee of the whole, staff just brings we, we usually have most of the reports in front of us, but they're usually here staff. If you have any questions for staff, just direct those. Go ahead, C A O. Thank you, Worship. So my, the custom has been, or at least my custom has been, to provide you a report on the progress of motions made by Council uh, at each monthly Committee of the Whole. That isn't a, uh, anything more than a format that, that uh, I've selected and, uh, and have provided over the past few years. If Council wants to see a different format of CAO report or other things included in a CAO report, more than happy to, to accommodate. Uh, but in, in this case, this is a report on motions of previous council, and uh, if you have any questions on those, I'd be more than happy to answer. Any questions for the CAO? I have a question. Sure. This process, this, this entire CAO task process. What if we, as a, as a council, looked at something in your long list, and we said, you know what, that just isn't important anymore? because it's already been passed by another council. Well, if you didn't want uh, work to continue on something, then a motion, a motion to that effect would, uh, would remove it from my list, I guess. That simple? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know because another council passed it, if we were bound by it. So if there's anything on here for the next time that anyone thinks, you know, we can always discuss it. Okay, so good. Um, fire department report. And the chief's not here, but the fire department reports in front of us. If anyone has any questions, he's on vacation. Yes, good for him. He deserves a vacation. Planning department. Is there anything there? Sorry about that. I know that our planner is off now. Just wondering what the process is, Jeff. How's that going to work in the uh, upstairs? If any comes up, anybody comes in with any planning issues or something that has to be dealt in a timely manner. Go ahead, CAO. So, uh, uh, anticipating uh, Caroline's leave, uh, I reached out to Morris Lloyd. Uh, Morris has served the town in the past as a consulting planner, and uh, he's he's the most senior planner in the province and uh, he was part of the team that just did our recent uh, municipal planning strategy and land use bylaw review and so he is retained on, an, on a continuing engagement through uh, through Caroline's absence. Good. <coughs> Go ahead, Councillor. I just wanted to mention to my uh, Councillor friend uh, Wade, uh, have, you read, have you seen the report before, Wade? This is quite an effort that uh, the department puts up every month. They're, yeah, it's really busy and involved and, uh, and, and wonderful, actually. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's a read in itself, isn't it? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, operational services. So our engineer's report is there. Questions for the engineer? So how are we doing on Cliff and Brown? We it looks uh, like it's got Main Street paved, and uh, we're going to be paving Water Street. Uh, so and they have the group Type One granular, granulars to uh, to put on Brown Street yet, but 
it'll be paved prior to freeze up. Okay. And we're going to uh, stop uh, the project at that point and continue in the spring. Okay, so how far up did we get before we, just up to Main? Yeah, just to Main Street. At Main Street at Brown, not at Cliff, yeah. right? Yeah. Just because I'm going to have to make a call and up update them. Okay. Councillor Dennis? Um, just wondering on the upgrades for the fire hall, um, will that be, will they be able to use second floor after the structural upgrades are done? Uh, that's the intent. Okay. To reinforce the floor so it becomes usable. So they'll be able to put on events and everything like they used to? Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yes, they would, but 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 <laughs> no, but there's there's you. a caveat there. But there's no washroom facilities upstairs. Okay. There's no what washroom? Facilities? There's no washroom facilities upstairs. Oh. They have to be upgraded. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to um, let Jeff take this one, then I'll get right back to you, Cliff. So to, to clarify or to elaborate on, on Dave's answer, uh, we've undertaken a number of uh, projects at the fire hall over the last few years and uh, we're at the point that with these changes or with these structural improvements on the floor, we, we would be able to reopen. However, we'll have to put some money aside and do uh, washroom upgrades in order for it to truly be usable. usable. Uh, so we're, we're very close. So is that like next budget is that what you're talking about potentially yes yeah so yeah. i just didn't know what yep. how long okay good councillor hood you're on i'm on uh, mm -hmm. i wanted to just pick up on the brown street because i left it 20 minutes ago and i understand there's a couple of hydrants that get to be installed but they've been there today and they've got the pre-paving stuff done they've had the rollers going and it looks a lot better than it did but i understand they still got to hook up a couple of hydrants dave Somebody, i think john told me that sir uh, i'm not sure with regard to that but i thought that it had been completed but don't think the hydrants are done yet yeah but it's good uh, we're uh, going to have some access to our law office unimpeded here pretty soon thanks <laughs> Good. Anything else for the engineer? Go ahead. It's on everybody's mind. Just what about Dave? Uh, uh, how are we doing with patching and some of the other stuff? Are we done with that for the year? Or is we still got a couple I, more? I don't look after patch paving. I just look after the capital side. Of okay. It. I know there's a couple spots here. There's still a little rough. What's that? Oh, my street. I wouldn't dare touch yeah. my street. Or Albert. So, Your Worship, I do have an operational report. I, I sorry, apologize. I, I neglected to provide it to Linda to put on the agenda. I'll circulate it to Council, but it provides an update on some of those operational matters and what the Department is up to. No. And uh, if you have any questions once you receive that, if you can simply contact me and I can get more information for you. Perfect. Okay. Anything else for Dave? Thanks, Dave. I know you've been busy. Good stuff. Finance Department. Jerry, have we got any money? Uh, we're looking, we're going through, I got a number of things that are basically about 80% complete, but nothing really to uh, present to you. Uh, financial statements, uh, hard to believe. We just finished up with auditors. I met with them this week on. Uh, on the uh, the waste park, so we finalized that. So we're done with the auditors now. We're actually into this year, but uh, gone through up to September statements for all of our reporting entities. Uh, of course, I typically leave the towns to the end, so I'm working through that one now. I have gotten through the revenue side. We're less than one percent off on our revenue projections to the end of September, so that's good. That's like a hundred thousand dollars on our. 13 and a half million we expected for the first half of the year. So 
I'm encouraged by that. And I haven't quite finished getting through the expense side of things. So, uh, but the first browse through expenses, there's nothing significant there. So there's probably some timing things and that kind of stuff in there. But uh, it looks like we're following along budget pretty well. Um, one thing that we are working on uh, with our new system is having a customer portal, it's called. And where what we'll be doing uh, in the near future is mailing out uh, basically uh, an access code to everyone that has an account with the town. And through our website, we'll set up a link. You will actually be able to go in and access your accounts. And, and right now, I'm trying to figure out what that, how it all works. Uh, so I'm set up myself and a couple other employees that have accounts with the town. We're kind of testing it and being the, the moles, as you'll say. So right now I can go on the, the internet from home and see all of my water bills, tax bills, what I owe to the town, that kind of stuff. Um, and what that'll do is that'll set, up, set us up uh, to actually start with uh, e-billing as well. So we'll be asking for email addresses and we can start sending out statements and bills through uh, through emails type of thing. Right. Um, I've got meetings next week with Town Suite, who are our software providers, and uh, we'll have lots of questions and go through it a little bit more, a little more detail with them at that point. So very near future, we should have that customer portal up and running. That's really great. Yeah. And any questions for Jerry? Isn't that really great? Yeah, I love that. Any more questions for Jerry? We're good. Recreation? Frank? Good afternoon. Uh, I just wanted to mention a couple things. Uh, first of all, I wanted to welcome our two new council members on Yarmouth Recreation Committee, Councillor Barry and Councillor Cleveland. Looking forward to working with you. And of course, our Deputy Mayor returns, so congratulations. Um, I, I just uh, dropped off a report, lots of stuff happening with the Recreation Department, but uh, just wanted to mention a key event that I'm hoping that all of council can attend tomorrow night's tree lighting. It's our official kickoff for the Christmas season tomorrow evening right here at Town Hall. Uh, six o'clock, we'll light the tree in Frost Park and get ready for the Christmas parade on Saturday. So it's the kickoff to the Christmas season and um, hope all of you uh, can come out and enjoy that evening. Thank you. Yeah, and then our parade. So any questions for Frank? I have a question. Where do you uh, access gymnastics in the town of Yarmouth? There is no gymnastics club in the town of Yarmouth. Um, gymnastics has, and Don might be able to, to expand on it. I don't think it's been in the school curriculum for 15 years or so. Um, it was, there was many safety issues that were identified, uh, instructors levels. Um, Hard to, hard to get for, for phys ed teachers. Um, the only gymnastics that we are, and it's not really gymnastics, it's called tumble bugs. We yeah, do some yeah. things for really early on age children, ages three to six. And as okay. far as gymnastics, there is no program that I'm aware of. Uh, I think no, they're, uh, Claire. they're going to Claire. District of Claire and Annapolis, there's some private clubs uh, where some past gymnastic athletes have started. Yeah, Councillor Barry. Um, a lot of schools are involved with, uh, or communities are involved with cheer now, which oh, involves right. a lot of tumbling, lifting, stuff like that. Rings and ropes and all that stuff that were hung from ceilings are completely taken up off uh, because of our insurance program through what we call SIP. So now they're um, unfortunately all that stuff is completely off anybody's agenda at physical education programs. So uh, gymnastics has been gone for a while. And well, I don't think we'll ever return back. I'm it, sorry, that just, it just, it blows my mind. Like I, we all turned out fine, <laughs> all right? And I, and I ate dirt and I hung from ropes. 
Yeah, and it, it's the it's sad to say, but that's the world we live in today. And and believe me, if we ever catch wind of anyone that has a gymnastics background that moves to the area, for sure we're going to be exploring that opportunity. But I guess the way that people are handling it is more through private clubs. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good job on the athletic awards too, Frank. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Councillor. Actually, I got something Please. for for you. Um, I just wanted to say, first off, congratulations on everything that happened through the summertime with the switch and mm. through the fall as well. Not quite as successful in the fall, but uh, congratulations on switch. And is there any kind of a plan in place or a, a committee set up to do switch in the future? I've got a ton of ideas, and I think switch is just a fantastic program that we can really grow from and sure. build on. For sure, we, we've, uh, we're looking into doing some evaluation and we'll get together with some, some folks with Caroline being a key player uh, in the switch, Open Street being off. I'm hoping someone like Natalie might step up and, and give us a hand and we'll, we'll definitely uh, uh, plan some more events for this coming year. Yeah. Bigger and better. Stay plugged into him there, Wade. You got those ideas, they gotta land. Good stuff, thank you, Frank. Economic development, Ms. Natalie. <laughs> Are our doors coming in tomorrow? Monday. Look, it's a special process to, <laughs> what is the, to temper the glass. It has to be in a large kiln which resides in Quebec and then it's been transported to Halifax, of which then the, the, the glass will go into the doors, the existing doors in the insert, and then be here Monday morning. So we will have doors. So I've provided you with my lengthy staff report. If there are any questions, I'm happy to, uh, to respond. Any questions for Natalie? Oh, this must be it here, economic development. Yep, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Natalie, I probably jumped the gun and, and uh, started to promote the downtown section of the, of the awesome. website. And we had a couple of people immediately uh, ask, and I think Jim responded on how, how other businesses can get included in that. Uh, they have so to pay me. What's that? <laughs> yeah. Any, anyway. Great job. I think that's a, that's a great start for promoting uh, local business, particularly downtown local business. And uh, yeah, just very pleased to see that. So I guess uh, if other businesses are interested in uh, being on that page, then certainly uh, we have a, a, a next short list that we'd like to get to. Um, then I would like to get their, their information. And then as part of my 2017-18 budget, then I would assign some dollars to that. Uh, we did uh, outsource the photography and some of the interview, uh, as well as the web uh, development portion, but um, I hope that that is just the beginning of the downtown marketing, and I hope to present in, uh, to the future to you about a marketing um, committee for the downtown. So, so we've got the, uh, what do you call them? They're up today. The banners. The banners, thank you. I just had a little fluff in my brain. The banners are up and they look great and, and most of them are gonna stay up all winter. Yes, these are the- Because they're coated like that. And the wreaths are going up and as I understand it, God love Todd, they're going all the way down to- uh, Yeah, to we did Street. to the south. Yeah, so this mm -hmm. year, the plan is that uh, we would uh, go all the way to Argyle and I think they've installed 200 wreaths. And uh, we just, just a small budget, we had put up some uh, downtown Yarmouth um, winter kind of banners. So we've got a couple that's seasonal in front of Town Hall that we'll take down after the Christmas and then the rest can stay up. And then next year our hope is with some budget is that we'll then take our Christmas all the way to Vancouver. Good stuff. Councilor McLeod. Um, just going back to what uh, <clears throat> Jeff mentioned a moment ago about the website. 
who's we got to maintain that the changes that will take place on a regular or irregular basis the businesses that are advertised you uh, sorry do you mean that we're going to change that up no well if there's when businesses when businesses come and go Yes, if a business leaves, they'll be removed from the website. Mm -hmm. uh, as new businesses come in, um, I guess that's part of me resourcing and budgeting to get yeah. that added to the website because sure. the, the, the whole goal of that is um, one of the things that coming to a small town is to have that engagement with that one-on-one -on, -one on a small business versus going into a large town. You don't get to know Sandy. You don't get to know... Um, the business owners by name and so the web that that portion of the website is to create that online community of not knowing just the name of the store but what that business is all about so the goal is that as we get businesses that are the boutique owners the restaurants the gift shops the p places that tourists or residents would go to that we would do those profiles good anything else for Natalie Thank you You're very, very welcome. much for everything. Okay, uh, business arising. Recommendation from Town Council, Cape Breton United Way. Oh, there it is, that $1,000 donation to Cape Breton United Way be for flood relief be referred to the Committee of the Whole. Uh, if I can speak to that. Yep. Um, and that was, uh, that was a recommendation from the U Union of Nova Scotia Municipalities that we donate to the Cape Breton uh, United Way for the flood relief. I know um, you've had an excellent rapport with Cecil Mayor Clark and, and Billy Joe and Stuart McCauley, who have always came to the forefront with us, and uh, John Morgan before Cecil Clark uh, for the ferry fight and for the memorandum of understanding and for uh, um, numerous other issues that we've we've partnered on and I think it just uh, shows a small token of our appreciation for the work they've helped us with over the years and I, I'll make a motion we donate $1,000 for the Cape Breton uh, United Way for the flood relief. Second by Councillor McLeod. Any further discussion? No, you can turn his light. You can turn, you can turn that on. There. Okay. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Recommendation from Town Council Re Park Dog Park. <coughs> the matter of recommendation of the Dog Park Committee for a council member to sit on the committee to be tabled. Yep, go ahead. So, Your Worship, um, <clears throat> this, this item was tabled from council, but if you, if you wish, I'd, I would offer some comments on that yes, request. Please. Uh, council got away from several years ago got away from uh, appointing members of council to committees or boards that are not directly created by or owned by in some way that the the town of Yarmouth the dog park is a citizens initiative that is supported by council and supported by by town staff uh, it is in its uh, early days uh, I would be concerned that we would appoint a council member to sit specifically on that committee. I think you should, you should uh, receive advice from the committee and should continue to support the committee, but not necessarily uh, appoint a member of council. I agree. So what's the next for this? It's been tabled. What's the next step? Well, the So we can leave it. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Did anybody? You would have put your lights on if you want to speak to that. Smoking receptacles on Main Street. CAO. Your Worship, this was a uh, a, um, a task assigned to staff from uh, an earlier meeting. There was a question about uh, installing smoking receptacles. So. Uh, Chad went ahead and uh, did some pricing on some suitable receptacles. Uh, they do cost, as you see here, $900 plus HST. Uh, this would be referred to budget, uh, would be an appropriate motion if you wish to proceed uh, with, with acquiring a number of these receptacles. 
Okay. Yep. Yes. Yes. Now to refer to to refer to budget. I'll make a motion that we refer this to budget. And I'll second that motion. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? How many are we looking for, Your Worship? It says four, four? for the nine hundred. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. That's for next year, right? Next year's budget. Why can't we find a thousand dollars to do it this year? <laughs> Just gave it to Cape Breton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jerry. The question is, why can't we find a thousand dollars this year to do it this year? I'm not saying we can't. If if you want to try to do it this year, we can figure out where we can do it, how we can do it. That might mean not doing something else, but we'll, we can look at it. Probably because we had $400 left over at the end of the last. Yeah. We were tight. Yeah. No, typically, typically what happens is probably, you know, in December and January, we'll know then where we'll be coming in under budget. Like right now, it's a bit too early to say stuff won't be done or will be under budget in certain expense lines. So things still happen. So, uh, but typically December, towards the end of January, we'll have a good feeling because there's only a couple months left of the year then, if we could do it then. But yeah. to do it today is hard to say. We said we'd, be, we'd try to be very, very careful. Yeah. We've done okay. Go ahead. Your Worship, I walked by something outside the door here. Mm -hmm. I think you should go have a look at it before you vote on this thing. You got one. It's not functioning. It's not functioning as in people. Well, it looks pretty crappy to me. Oh, the one downstairs at the back door. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want those on Main Street? Because that's um, what they'll look actually, like. No. That's what the no, they won't. Actually, these are, I think they're, it says they're black in color and they have a decorative appearance that's similar to the street lamps. And, and, and you'll look after them better than the one that's outside your door here? I'm not looking after anything. Well, no, but you've got one outside your door and it's not being looked at if or I, maintained, I would say. If I had my way, I'd write a ticket for everybody that leaves a cigarette butt because it's still littering. Uh, so my final comment, it. Your Worship, on those is that usually those, you see them, they're put out by a merchant or you, yeah. in, outside of lounges and places like yeah. that where there's a fair amount of smoking and they have to go outdoors. However, I, I, I had to comment because I walked <laughs> by that thing as I came in and I, jeez, that's a... And, and, I, and I think exactly. it's kind of funny we're sitting and talking about putting them on Main Street and yeah. we can't maintain the one we have. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Questions. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Motion carried. <coughs> uh, okay. Business. Update on fire pit burning. investigation yes I have I've been reviewing some of the bylaws and I, I misinformed you your worship you'll be you'll be pleased to know uh, <laughs> uh, in reviewing uh, Halifax's bylaw which is one that was referred uh, to in, in some of our earlier discussions they do have a uh, a rather prohibitive uh, bylaw when it comes to fire pits uh, they only allow the burning of fire pits from October 15th to March 14th and then uh, you have to be 70, 75 feet from a building and uh, certain times a day. However, uh, and this is the good news, Your Worship, is they do have a separate set of provisions for chimneys or wood-burning appliances, and so uh, outdoor wood-burning appliances. And so in that case, they're, uh, they're less restrictive. You can use them year-round. They need to be 15 feet from a building. And uh, you know the the main concern is that the wood that's, that's burnt be be well seasoned and that it not be used for burning general yard waste because that generates uh, more of an irritation in in the form of smoke. 
Uh, I have reached out to a number of towns uh, similar in size to our own uh, to ask what they do. And it is, it is a bit of a mixed, uh, mixed bag. Some are much like Halifax and allow uh, chimeneas quite, uh, quite freely in their community. Uh, some have uh, restrictions on fire pits, but not generally as restrictive as Halifax. Um, and some do not, as, as is our case, don't allow any, any burning. So uh, I'll put together a chart for you uh, that will be forthcoming uh, in the next uh, few weeks, and you can make a decision if you wish to amend our fire prevention bylaw. Good. You okay? Thank you. So glad I was misinformed. <laughs> okay, so playground equipment, deputy. Uh, thank you. Your worship had a question from a citizen the other day. They found out that the South Centennial School is going to be turned over back to the town of Yarmouth. They're just wondering what would happen with the playground equipment in case the building was ever sold or maybe condominiums or apartments or anything put in there. What would the what would happen? Yeah, or offices. It what would happen? Oh, it won't be offices. Yeah, what would happen with the equipment? And can we salvage any? Move, move it farther back on the lot. Um, maybe get Frank to look at it. Or combination thereof. Well, uh, we have been notified that we will receive the South Centennial School, and uh, we will be doing a walkthrough. And uh, I've talked to our solicitor concerning the condition in which we would receive the building and what are the re legal requirements uh, around that so we're prepared to deal with that and one of the things interesting or ironic or coincidental is that I recently received a, uh, a message from somebody complaining about the condition of that equipment and uh, they had the child there and there was a hazard that they identified so I passed that on to the school board and they said they'll look after it so uh, the main concern with the equipment would be uh, does it it hasn't been properly maintained. Does it still meet the CSA standards? Um, if it is already installed and when it was installed, it met the standards, and as long as it's being inspected and it's safe, it can continue to be used. If you move the equipment and reinstall it, I believe then it has to meet the current standard, and so we'd have to review that. Uh, whether or not it would stay on that property really depends on what the future of that property is, which is, which is a question for council in the very near future. Um, if we chose to retain the property and keep the playground there, then we'd simply have to maintain it. Uh, there is a new school being built, obviously, to replace uh, South, and uh, as typically the case, I expect that school will have insufficient playground equipment, and uh, if this equipment is, uh, is us usable, maybe the parents uh, in the school community would like to see it move to the school or maybe to another location in, in the neighborhood. Um, you know, we'll sell the equipment back to the province. All depends yeah, on what, yeah. what the future of the property is and what council's desire is with, re with okay. regard to, to the Good. equipment. Good. Presentation request, Provincial Health Authority. Councillor Cleveland. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. This is the first time I've ever done this, so if I sound awkward, I apologize. No. Um, this whole thing stems from a conversation that I had with the town CAO. Um, First off, the, the changes in uh, the health authority uh, would probably require a presentation at the very least anyway, just to see where we stand as far as the health authority and their changing paradigm uh, on the way that they approach health care. But uh, ultimately for me, it's purely selfish reasons because one of the things that's on my bucket list is a walk-in clinic. I seriously believe that Yarmouth requires one. I believe that that conversation, although we have no real authority in that way, that conversation should start at this table. And so I would like to, uh, previously, to, to go back again, previously um, health authorities tend to dismiss uh, walk-in clinics. Uh, with they, they, they always explained it as a consistency of care issue, that they didn't feel that walk-in clinics were the best way to go. But uh, I believe that it's a, a necessary thing in this area especially with the, the shortage of doctors we have. I think it could be populated by nurse practitioners, overseen by a doctor. There, there are ways we could do that, and I would like to have someone here in order to ask those pointed questions. Mm -hmm. so, so I see your motion. I'm just, before we go to the motion, I'm just gonna make one suggestion, if you're okay with it, that 
that is opposed to us doing it, we do it as a joint council meeting, have them come into the three councils because we already sit together on a, what I call doctor recruitment team, number one. Number two, we're dishing out some bucks for, for the clinics that we have. So it would be really great if we could go ahead. Yes, well, as we did, as we had our presentation yesterday, I, th I thought that was a great format. Yeah, that it exactly is. is the kind of thing I'd yeah. like to see. Okay. So they did, I just, just as a preamble, they did come down and explain, Janet Knox and, and her team, they came down and they explained what they were going to do, how they were going to do it. I know they're looking now at collaborative care teams as opposed to just plunking the doctor here and there. You can see that in Weymouth, right? They're not. So, um, so when we send that out, and I'll make sure, Linda, that we, when we send that out, um, that we have pointed questions so that we're getting all our questions answered when they come. So yeah, so, so um, Councillor Cleveland's motion is that due to the dissolution of many health care boards, a representative from the Provincial Health Authority be invited to make a presentation to the joint councils, which is the three of us, regarding the new health care model. Okay, so that you want to make that motion. Okay. That motion. Okay. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Good stuff. Presentation request. Applications for committees. Your Worship, we have vacancies on two of our uh, two of our committees uh, for citizen appointments, and there are. I believe attached to the agenda. Uh, it is confidentially, you'd have to log it in to see it, but we have applications from two citizens uh, to fill those uh, vacancies. And uh, has everyone had a chance to look? Have everybody seen those applications? So That's we, okay. we can deal with this. I, I want to bring this forward and, uh, and let you know that we have applications, we have openings. Uh, if you're prepared to deal with this, we can. If you're not prepared, then we can, because the appointments would not be, be made until the council meeting anyway. Okay. Uh, you can take the time between now and then to review, mm -hmm. and we'll find a, a discreet way of, uh, of making these appointments and having a discussion in public okay. as is the requirement. So. Uh, so for now, because everyone hasn't had a chance to adequately review, why don't we just, you're okay with those two? So I don't know if everybody is. Yeah. So. Can we just refer this matter to the council meeting? And Certainly. Do we need a motion to refer it? Okay. Moved. I'll second that. So uh, has everybody seen them? No. Okay. Uh, are you logged into your website? Okay. So we'll have a look at that. All, All right. right. So let's refer this to council. Okay. We'll see if we can deal with the technical issue. Okay. Moved by Councillor McLeod. Second by Councillor Hood. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary. Motion carried. Okay. Good stuff. All right. Request for decision proclamations. Yeah. Well, yes and no. This is good and bad. The good news is I circulated across request for decision. The bad news is the actual policy is on your desk in hard copy today. So okay. uh, I, I had sent it over to the solicitor for his review prior to, uh, to attaching it, and then uh, once he responded, didn't, uh, didn't get it attached. So uh, the only difference between the version that you're looking at and the one that I sent to the solicitor is formatting. I had one run-on paragraph that I sent him, but I've divided it up to try and make it readable. So a policy, uh, you just simply need notice of 10 days ahead, 10 or seven, seven days ahead seven. of a council meeting uh, for you to consider it. You now have it uh, a good two weeks ahead of the next council meeting. Uh, if you had any questions, and I apologize for you just seeing it uh, today, but if you had any questions uh, today or 
leading up to the council meeting, more than happy to answer them. And so this will be on your council agenda for consideration. Good, so we don't have to do anything with it now? Not unless there's any questions. Or any questions? <coughs> yep, go ahead. Uh, God, first, we got this one first, though. This encapsulates what we mm -hmm. informally decided we would do in this area. Go ahead. That's okay. I was just asking you a, a teasing question. Jeff, at the top of the page that you handed out is policy number T O Y dash XX. XX could be a number someday. Tommy Yarmouth, yeah. What? Oh, <laughs> yes, so I stole the format from another policy and, uh, and quickly put two X's in there, but we will put a number on it uh, if adopted. <laughs> Good. Okay, request for proclamations. Request for decision heritage officer. Remember this, yes. Roman numeral, yes. Uh, your Worship, our uh, Heritage Officer, uh, Caroline Robertson, is off on a leave and she will be off for approximately a year. So uh, in the interim, I would ask that you consider appointing uh, Janet Watson as our Acting Heritage Officer. Uh, Janet has agreed, if it's Council's desire, to appoint her to that role. She has served us in the past in the role of Heritage Officer and uh, uh, gave up the responsibility a couple of years ago due to, uh, uh, I guess, uh, the workload with her, with her regular job was, was more than she could handle along with this. Things have changed and uh, she settled into a uh, uh, situation with her regular work that she feels she can take this on. And so I'm uh, urging you and encouraging you and asking you to appoint her as your heritage officer. Deputy. I'll make a motion we appoint Janet Watson as acting heritage officer. If I get a second, I'd just like to say a couple words. I'll second it. And uh, I had a conversation with Janet uh, just in case she was appointed and looks like she will be and she's gonna go over the last uh, bunch of uh, meetings from the Heritage Advisory Committee to see if there's anything, any outstanding is issues. She's gonna talk to uh, Judy upstairs and see if there's anything that Caroline's pointed out that has to be done, but uh, Janice already hit the ground running. She's gonna look over what's happened the last uh, several meetings and see what, uh, see what we'll put on. And we're looking, uh, I think it's uh, Councillor Hood and Councillor McLeod are are the Council appointees for Heritage, and we'll be looking at having a meeting in uh, sometime mid-January. Good stuff. Any further discussion? Question. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Aye. Motion carried. Tender Street. Stars Road, Brunswick Street. Street, traffic lights. Traffic lights. <laughs> Going where? <laughs> right? That's not where I want them, but that's all right. I prefer to Dave. Uh, Your Worship, uh, we have a recommendation from the engineer uh, for the uh, for the installation, supply and installation of uh, traffic lights at Brunswick Street. Uh, it is a tender, and so it would require for approval that you have that be considered a council meeting. And if you're comfortable, we could do that today. If you're not, then we could deal with it in two weeks. Uh, the memo from the engineer says invited tenders uh, were requested from three contractors who are qualified to install traffic control signals. Two responses were received and the results are outlined uh, in the engineer's report. Uh, there were, let's see, roadway systems faxed amendments to reduce their unit prices that were submitted in their tender. The amended unit prices were not received before the closing time and could not be considered. After reviewing the tender for arith arithmetic errors and completeness, it is recommended that the tender be awarded to Black and McDonald Limited in the amount of $188,843 plus HST. <coughs> and uh, this is in line with the estimate of probable construction costs. So that is for your consideration. Councillor Barry. I would say so, move, uh, I recommend. Okay, moved by Councillor Barry. Second. Second by Deputy Mayor, Councillor McLeod. Um, we talked about this last year, or no, not last year, recently, did we not? And uh, we talked about actuation of uh, lights and all that stuff. And at, at one point, 
I was in favor of having lights on the corner of, uh, in, in question here. And uh, if we didn't have lights there now, and it was made to look like a proper four-way stop. Where, where am I? I'm on the right location, Sarah's Road and Brunswick Street. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't, we, we, we would do even better the way, than the way it is now. Like I approach that intersection on a regular daily basis, perhaps not at the, at the busiest of hours. I'm not questioning, I'm not sure I'm gonna vote yet, but uh, I'm, I'm teasing a little bit. I want to find out if we can get by with a properly designed four-way stop without lights, as opposed to the way we use it now, just for discussion purposes. Oh, well, I was gonna to defer to Dave first. Yeah. Uh, our traffic consultant already considered a four-way stop and, and it doesn't give the proper level of service. The service would be uh, a failing uh, level and uh, the recommendation would still stand as far as actuated uh, lights it still would give a better level of service and move traffic uh, on stairs road better it would be the same type of system that we recently installed at uh, jody shelley drive the uh, sensors that <laughs> that's that's working much better than it did so uh, it, it uh, the, uh, the lights would remain green on Stars Road until such time as uh, traffic was on the side streets and then it would call for the light to change and then it would revert back to green again once the traffic cleared. I, I uh, think that's the best system to have there. It, it uh, I think, would work a lot better than a four-way stop. You just sold me because I wasn't sold 30 <coughs> seconds ago. Council Cleveland. No, I'm sorry. I, I've got to <laughs> kick the dead horse and uh, just go on record because it's, it, look, we're, we're new here. A couple of us are brand new, but we all went out there and we all knocked on doors. And this is, this is something that came up over and over and over again. Um, what do you have to say makes perfect sense, Dave? It does, as long as they work. Can we have working lights? It, would that be an extra thing? And I'm sorry for the sarcasm, but no. the point is, is that <laughs> If we get this built, can we have it functioning properly? And, and what, what happens when something breaks? And I know that they break all the time. And it seems to take sometimes literally a year before they get fixed again. What's the problem with the, uh, with the parts? Do people not keep them on hand? I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't know this. No, he's going to answer that. OK. But keep keep I, your light on in case you have a rebuttal. OK. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, CAO. Thank you. So uh, our biggest, uh, the most problematic light that we've had uh, in terms of failure and the consequences of that failure has been the light at the end of Jody Shelley Drive. Mm -hmm. uh, in that situation, we, we purchased a, uh, a system that was quite new in terms of the technology at the time. Instead of putting in the, the loops in the asphalt, we used a puck system, a puck sensor system. And unfortunately, as sometimes is the case with new technologies, they don't work out. And uh, I think that, that would be, I guess, the blunt way of putting it is that technology did not prove to be successful and municipalities uh, stayed away from it. Those that bought it uh, were stuck with it, like us. Sensors failed, uh, the supply became very limited because they weren't selling the systems, they weren't producing the parts. And those municipalities who happen to have parts on hand were keeping them very close because they wouldn't be able to replace them and they were having failures just as, as we were. So Dave, um, uh, in the past, spent hours and hours chasing parts to try and find parts to replace, to fix that light. Long story short, uh, we recently went ahead and replaced that system. And so now that is a radar controlled uh, intersection, much like the one at the end of the 101. Mm -hmm. Now what that means is that, is that the sensor is, is a radar unit up overhead as opposed to a puck embedded in the, uh, in the asphalt. The timing of that light uh, and sort of what signals it, it produces and, and the sequencing and so on is, is set based on the traffic engineer's uh, counts and assessment. So 
it's optimized for that specific intersection, and so it wouldn't operate just like the 101, because the 101 is optimized for that situation. Mm -hmm. So, Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Brunswick Street intersection will be optimized for that specific intersection, and uh, uh, will not. Oh, well, I guess will will be optimized based on the traffic counts that have now been well, done a couple times. It, it, yes, it'll no. operate the same as Jody Sally Drive does now. Um, as I said, uh, it'll remain green until the light side streets call for uh, for it to change. Uh, so, radar systems are, uh, seem to be a reliable technology, and uh, there's a lot of them out there right now. So, nothing's perfect, but. It seems to be more reliable than uh, than the the loops and, and the pucks. So, so so here's the thing. In, in really, once we get these in at Brunswick Street, this goes through. There's Brunswick Street. There's the light in front of Sobeys, where the, you can press the button and cross. And there's Jody Shelley Drive. That's three sets of lights that really aren't lights. Everything's green going down. Stars Road until somebody really needs to get out of a side street. So that's good. Like it, it looks like a lot of lights, but it's not when they're functioning. It's like taking three sets of lights out. And, um, and I agree, because I heard the same thing at, at the door, and, and my response, <coughs> don't know how I'm sitting in this chair, because it wasn't a pretty response sometimes, but number one, um, the town is getting busier. Stars Road is crazy on a good day, even when everything's functioning. To me, that's a good thing. It's, a, it's the same as, you know, a couple people used to yell at me and say, I can't even find a spot to park on Main Street. And my response is, isn't that great that the town is so busy that we have the extra, that we have the extra here? So, so once these are working properly, I think it's gonna be great. And, and, and then, so we can say, yeah, we did, right? Like we did, and um, and it should it should work. So I'm, I don't know who was next. Were you, did you want to? I ask would just for a question? second. Um, first off, right now Jody Shelley Drive's working wonderfully. As a matter of fact, I've made it an ongoing joke. I got elected for four days, and look, I fixed it. <laughs> Good for me. But it is. It's working wonderfully right now. Um, one question I do have, maybe you can answer it. When it's working great now, and it's not snowy. Does, do radar systems, are they affected? What if, what if we have a snowstorm and somehow the, the snow is blocking off the, the view of the radar or some such? Is that an actual thing? Not I'm just curious. Be driving. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I'm aware, the snow doesn't affect the radar systems. I looked at other systems as well, looked at video or uh, systems, and they are affected by snow. That's why I didn't go that route because mm -hmm. I didn't want to end up with a problem. But, okay. Uh, Thank you. I'm satisfied. Okay. So I'm going to go to Councillor Barry and then to Councillor Hood. Okay. I have two questions. Number one was time frame because the people that work outside of town that have approached me several times that have businesses or stuff inside of our town and go to work every day faithfully uh, concerned about the time frame in which this is going to take place. And the next one, and it's not even related to that set of lights, is the set of lights on Haley Road versus Stars. And unfortunately, I'm a Nighthawk, so I'm out around 12-ish. And um, I've sat at those lights because I didn't want to get a ticket. I probably was sat there 20 minutes. And I got a little nervous, and I'd back up, and I'd route through a side route and go through the, through the car dealership and sneak around. And I was wondering, there's my, I'm a little more worried about that one for people that are Nighthawks um, and also the one that we're already located at the, the time frame that these people are looking, uh, these people are looking for something to be done. Who do I ever get that question to? Okay, so, so to the engineer, so the time frame on, so the Jody Shelley Drive was the really, coming from out of town, that was the big deal right there by, by Jody Shelley by the Mariner Center, so that's fixed, right? That. Further I'm more towards the one that does car washes on the corner. Oh, that's the. Um, 
and they have uh, uh, home hardware on yeah, the other that's side. The, okay, that's the that's Haley. not Joey Shelley, right? So you're talking about that in the morning? The Haley, they're talking about the like, night, the, like I'm talking about okay. 12 o'clock. Like okay, so, so at night. It doesn't night. change, and you have to break the system, you're scared. So let's direct that, let's take care of that one first. Okay, so, so Dave? I wasn't aware there was a problem with that. We had a problem, uh, I don't know, a year or so ago with it. And it was a hard thing to track down. It was uh, it turned out to be a broken uh, wire in the loop that's embedded in the asphalt. It took a while to find it, but we did. So uh, I wasn't aware there was a problem, but we can uh, track that down and repair it. Okay, and what was the other question you had? The other one was the time frame for the Yeah, the time frame for the ones that are going in on Brunswick. Brunswick, well, if I can get awarded, uh, I can get the equipment ordered. Normally it takes six to eight weeks to get the equipment. Uh, the underground could be started right away, so the above ground could be installed at a later time. When, uh, it doesn't matter when, when you do that, if the weather can be bad, but uh, the underground has to be done quite quickly, so. Good, okay, and Councillor Hood? Uh, David, we had a traffic study done for all of Stars Road a number of years back, of course, my recollection. Uh, is that study still something that's a baseline for some of the work that you do with tra traffic authority? I think the recommendation of that study was that we not add any more accesses to Stars Road itself. Yeah, well, I remember that. Yeah. We have, though, haven't we? Added. Uh, I'll cut to the chase. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we, we have, have. the shell. Well, cut the, the shell chase. was added. Is the installation of a light as opposed to a four-way stop at Stars and Brunswick consistent with what that report recommended? Because it went right down to, to Maine, as I recall. I don't think they got into whether or not a light was required there. Well, there was a light there then. Yes, there was. And, and, and my understanding and recollection is that it contemplated that light, the light down at Maine, as being part of the infra light infrastructure all along Star Road. Yes, yeah. There was no recommendation for a four-way stop there. There were some recommendations at Burton Avenue, I think. Not for a four-way stop. No, no. For a light at Burton yeah. Avenue. Burton at that time. And for a turning lane at Pleasant and Stars going north, which we did do. Uh, I'd have to refresh my memory for, of that report. Anyway, we still have that yeah. report. Yes, right? we do. Yeah. Thanks. It may, may, may not be totally valid, but I'd have to reread re it. Thank you. Good. Okay, you want to turn your light off? Okay, so he's just getting ready, Don, just in case he wants to, right? <laughs> okay, so it was moved and seconded that we um, take the recommendation for Black and McDonald, $188,843 plus HST. Any further discussion? Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, so correspondence for action. Gateway to the Bay of Fundy designation. Go ahead. Well, I don't know what it is. I haven't got a copy of it, but. Oh, um, I, no, it's just. In response to a request from the village of Westport, council is asked that this letter and attached. Well, I'm not in conflict. I support that. That the village of Westport and the municipality of the district of Digby considered considers Briar Island as a <coughs> gateway to the Bay of Fundy. Aren't we the gateway? Isn't that where it opens up? Huh? Uh, yeah. I have the answer. Go ahead. You're on. <laughs> the. The federal government designates uh, the entrance to the Ga Bay of Funday as being from Briar Island across to a point on the other side of the bay. And thereafter, up about so many 
miles or kilometers. Chart used miles, What's nautical miles. miles. Town of Choro's development agency applied for uh, doing a project, and they want to call themselves the gateway to the um, Bay of Funding. A business enterprise on Briar Island, who I represent, has a trademark called the Gateway, calling themselves the Gateway, Mariner right. Cruisers at That's the right. Gateway to the uh, Bay of Fundy, and uh, there's been a bit of a dispute because they've said, stop using our trademark. And Digby has supported them and so on and so forth. So that's what they were doing there, I think. I, I don't think you should do anything with it, frankly. I, I don't either. I don't think it's any that's of our what business. what I'm thinking right now. I, but I did note uh, that it was, that Yarmouth was the gateway town before it was rebranded. And it's Scotia. really at the outer margins of the Bay of Fundy. I'm just having some fun because nothing's going on with this thing. I mean, you can argue that Moncton, you can argue that Amherst, you can have, uh, argue that Windsor are all just as much gateways to the Bay of Fundy as is Truro. But Truro's not on the Bay of Fundy, it's on the head of Minus Basin, by the way. Anyway, I think okay, it's so just so we can a receive and place on file if we want. Received and placed on file. Uh, so moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any more discussion? Uh, Questions being called? You good? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Motion carried. Uh, request for presentation, Gil, for the Facade Improvement Society. He's just asked that once new council is sworn in, um, and have their feet under them. <laughs> Our feet were under us the minute we sat down, right? If you can fix lights in four minutes. You... <laughs> four, days, four, days, four days, four days, four days. <laughs> okay, so, um, so I mean, I'm, I'm good. I'd love to have an update, see where we are. Want to make that motion? Okay, moved by Councillor McLeod. Second by Councillor Cleveland. Any more discussion? Questions. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Halifax Typographical Union request for presentation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got a problem with this one. We've got, um, and I don't even have it in front of me for some reason, but it was the Chronicle Herald, wasn't it, Linda? Chronicle Herald's looking to come in and present and I believe the letter said we weren't getting service down this end of the province they took away Yarmouth and what other one took away the Yarmouth Bureau and another one but Bridgewater, Bridgewater that's it I don't know why I don't have that oh I'm sorry it's right in front of me I was looking for a letter there was a formal letter too oh okay with the closing in recent years Lack of news coverage means your community and your region becomes isolated for the rest of the province. We would like to have an opportunity to discuss these issues and how we may all find a way to get this issue resolved. Okay, so that's a union. I'm out, but if anybody wants to make a motion. <coughs> Sorry, Councillor, go ahead. Uh, your Worship, <coughs> I've, I've been following this very closely for the past few months, but I just don't think we have any jurisdiction or austerity when it comes to this. Um, Right now, the Chronicle Herald has locked out its its employees, its its reporters, and it's been months and months and months. It's, some of them are hungry, <laughs> literally. They're friends of mine, um, but but we have no no part in that whatsoever, and so I, I just don't see why we would bother with this. So, um, receive and place on files what I'm looking for Deputy, uh, well I was gonna I can make that motion but I too was awkward with that uh, letter from the Chronicle Herald so move that we receive and place on file okay moved seconded all those in favor aye, aye. contrary motion carried there were no additions anything else on there um, okay the utility poles but that wasn't on there, just information. Good, okay. Anything else from you? Any in camera?
Okay, so we have it in camera. Okay, so let's, we want to do, we want to do the uh, lights. lights. Yeah, so, so do you want to, okay. Uh, and then we'll go. Okay, so motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Uh, okay, so we'll call the meeting to order. We're now in a council meeting, so we can take care of, of the lights issue. Um, Linda's got everything there. Declarations of conflict of interest, approval of agenda. There's only one item. Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to approve the recommendation for the lights. 188,000. Okay, Councillor Barry. Yeah. Good. Moved by Councillor Barry, second by Councillor Cleveland. Any discussion? Questions, Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary, motion carried and a motion to go in camera. Okay, in we go. Okay, in, mm -hmm. okay, so we're going right in here. There's cookies in there, yes, and coffee and fresh.